Hello friends, I hope you're all hanging in there. It was like seven months ago that I made my 12 things to do while social distancing video. Now, not only are we gearing up for a second wave and putting some of those restrictions back up, but the days are also getting shorter, colder, darker. The economy is tanking. They need relief. Shame on the Republicans, shame on the Democrats, and shame on this president. So first of all, vote. There is a link in the description with information for your state. And after that, let's take a moment for ourselves and think about how we can prepare for winter. What one-time tasks can we check off now and get them over with, like getting our flu shot, scheduling a dentist appointment, or buying some vitamin D supplements? And what routines can we start establishing now before we really truly need them? Thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. We're gonna take it over to our senior book correspondent, Patrice. Thanks, Patrice. As many know, autumn is the ideal season to cozy up with a good fiction book. So generally, I do prefer reading paper books. I've just been settling for ebooks since quarantine started because I couldn't get to the physical library. So you might not want to be going to physical bookstores at this time, and maybe shopping for books is just like decision overwhelm for you. Book of the Month is a perfect way to discover books from new and emerging authors. It is a popular and quickly growing online service where they vet hundreds of books each month and give you a selection of new and early release titles to choose from. If you're anything like me, some months you read more than other months. Sometimes you go weeks without reading and then other weeks, like last week for example, I literally was reading at a pace of one book per day. So if you're busy one month, it's no problem. You can always skip that month's book and not be charged. You also just get great prices for really high quality hardcover books. I mean, look at this one. I would literally put this one just on a shelf as decor. It's $14.99 per month, but you can get your first month for only $9.99 using the code BOOKUP. For October, they have a historical fiction, literary fiction, thriller, contemporary fiction, and fantasy. My favorite was the last one, the fantasy one, if you want my recommendation. So yeah, lately I've been reading mainly like nonfiction, personal development books, and maybe you as a viewer of this channel can relate. But fiction reading is also important. I think I was severely undervaluing it. It improves your empathy. It makes you more emotionally intelligent. There was actually a study done in 2013 at the University of Toronto where they examined how short fictional stories compared to non-fictional essays affected participants' need for cognitive closure. Don't worry, this was a new term to me as well. Basically, it says cognitive closure is the desire to reach a quick conclusion in decision-making and an aversion to ambiguity and confusion. And what they found was that the people who read short stories needed less cognitive closure, so they were more open-minded, more thoughtful, more creative. So yeah, that was my advertisement for Book of the Month and also my advertisement for reading fictional stories. So on this particular evening, I was taking senior portraits for a friend and I had a little bit of time beforehand So I just tidied up my room. Okay, Google play Spotify Okay, Google Okay, Google. Okay, Google. Is it dead? It's dead. Don't give up on me. Google? Okay, Google Okay, Google Back when I had a carpet in here, I tried to vacuum regularly just because you're supposed to vacuum regularly, but like it didn't look any different afterwards, it just kind of fluffed it up a little bit. Now that I have the wood floors, it's crazy how much dust and little pieces of paper gather and you can really see it now. So I took some time to listen to some music, sweep the floors and clear off my desk. This is the first plant I've had in a while because I've murdered a couple of plants so I thought I should take a little break but I feel like I'm ready to give it another try and I've heard that this one's pretty easy to take care of. It's supposed to grow really long so I'm excited about that because that's kind of the effect that I tried to achieve with my fake ivy on the wall. walks outside while the weather's still nice. I guess once it's winter, I can just put a coat on. Um, but the senior yeah, portrait shoot was outside and we had some really beautiful scenery. So that was my walk substitute for the day. I keep forgetting how beautiful Madison really is. So I always feel like I gain a new appreciation for my city whenever I take photos. Hi, Patrice's vlog. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> oh, I want to show you a couple of new additions to my room since I did my room makeover. One of those like 
mid-century modern things. I might actually turn off the lights. Yeah, I feel like you can get a better idea of it. I still have to get light bulbs for it. I got the two new pillow covers and then the headboard. The headboard was way cheaper than I thought headboards would be, so I think I got this for about $75, and I'll put the link in the description. Then I ordered this poster that's like a black and white map of Madison. I thought it would be a nice little sentimental touch, especially once I move out. Oh my gosh, I think I just broke a leaf of the plant, sorry. Um, but it'll be a nice little memory of where I grew up. I'm also waiting for this macrame plant hanger to arrive for my plant. Oh, oh, I forgot. This little guy, this is for sitting on. You can sit on it or you can rest your feet on it. You can change light bulbs with it. After I came back, I was very tired and hungry, so I sat down to eat dinner and I put on that day's Jeopardy episode. I've really been thinking about like the value of TV. I don't think you can really say that TV is bad because it's like, well, what are you watching? When are you watching it? With whom are you watching it? And so for me, I found that TV can be a really valuable way to relax and like decompress in short bits of time. I think TV gets too much of a bad rap sometimes. Okay, here's a tip. This is the best piece of advice you're gonna get on this channel black tea I like the holiday flavor even though it's not yet the holidays let it steep for a while and then add coconut milk the kind that has sugar in it or you can just put like honey or maple syrup otherwise it is so good let's get some mood lighting okay Google wait I forgot Google is dead I guess I have to do everything myself because I can't do voice activation after that, I was all socialized out from the photo shoot, so I went up to my room to spend time with my favorite person, myself, and just read. So of the five books that I got, my favorite was The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. It was so good. I kind of regret reading it in one day because I wish I had savored it more and read it more slowly, but I guess I can always reread it. It was just so, 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 so good. Then I convinced my brother to play Among Us with me, which I'm still not great at, but everything takes practice. And again, it's like the TV thing where we get the idea that video games are like purely bad and purely a distraction. And yeah, of course it can be unhealthy, but I think it can also be a little dose of fun in the right quantities. And so yeah, playing with my brother, I feel like is one of the ways that I've just been trying to enjoy life more because I've been realizing that if I don't make time for that and I focus on nothing but achievement, like. What's the point of that? I'm eventually going to burn myself out. I'm waking up for you. I'm going to take care of you. I don't take care in my life. I've never taken care of Look at this movie. After that, I started on my official bedtime routine. I brushed my teeth, did my skincare routine. I updated my day one journal on my phone where I like to just write a couple of sentences about what I did that day and then I journaled in my paper journal. I've always had morning and bedtime routines, so not like since birth, but a long time before COVID and I think it's especially important now because they really serve as my anchors. So my morning routine is pretty much a 100% success rate. My evening routine is a little more challenging to stick with, especially if I'm feeling down. Like it's ironic because that's when I most need my routines, but it's hardest to get my to do them. So yeah, I encourage you to create rituals of your own as we head into the winter season. As difficult as it may be, I know, to try and slow down and flow with the energy of autumn. Obviously, it won't be possible to do a long, relaxing routine every single day, but hopefully you can pick bits and pieces of it and just create something fun for you and try and practice it as often as you can. That's the end of this video. I'm going to sleep now. I hope you all stay safe and healthy and happy, and I'll see you next week. Bye!